Alright, so we'll start with the wiring directly to the winch. Champion has it pretty easy. They got a blue washer on here to identify to put the blue cord. And they've got a yellow washer down here to identify the yellow cord. So I'll get started on hooking those up. And they have also pretty good instructions here, diagrams that make it easy to wire. Here's all this stuff too, which is the switch. Um, not sure what this is yet. That might be the remote sensor actually, because this is a wireless winch. So I guarantee that's what that is. So uh, we'll get started, we'll wire that up and then move on from there. All right, got the blue cord hooked up onto the yellow. We had some help, but she's on break. Getting closer. Also, I have attached some of the accessories, the hook accessory on the end here. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to put a snatch block hanging up from here so that it has a straight run through the trailer to pick up a car. Second wire on, and I've ran it through the holes that came pre drilled in my winch plate. Um, this looks like the, I guess you'd call that a relay. Um, again, cha the champion has this color coded. Got my blue screw here and my yellow screw here. And then my other screws here are going to connect to my switch. Um, not only my switch, but it looks like my wireless remote receiver. They probably both go on these switch terminals. So, uh, first off, I'm going to put the yellow wire on this bolt, and then the blue wire on this bolt. And that will give us power to the winch. I'm not sure where I'm going to mount this yet. We'll figure it out. Okay, so, looks like I was wrong. These two terminals actually go to the battery. Uh, that red and black, it obviously means positive and negative. So my switches run off these two cords that come out of this uh, switch assembly. There's a green and a black coming out of it. And then from my receiver, I have a red, and then I have a green and the black easy connection. Um, those look like they go to here because they actually have a jumper that allows me to connect in to my manual switch over here. Sorry for the baby music. She's still on break. Um, so yeah, it looks like both the greens and blacks just tie together. As far as the reds go, I'm not sure yet. I'm thinking that they somehow just mount on this red screw, but I'll take a look at the actual instructions because they have fairly good instructions, so I don't want to guess. So, all right. Moving on. So I know it kind of looks like a mess, but it's all wired up now. So I found out the correct name for this little terminal is a contactor. It also calls it a solenoid contactor, so. Um, yep, it's all wired up. It should be fully functional. It's not hooked to a battery yet. But one side comes to the manual switch here, which I have to find the spot to put. And then the other spot, or the other switch, comes out to this antenna receiver here. Um, I might mount that inside of the battery box. Uh, my positive and negative two, let's see, my positive and negative to the winch, and then my positive and negative to the battery here. And that just runs to my battery box. And I will go grab my deep cycle battery, 12 volt. I'll hook it up and test it out. That 12 volt actually came from that RV, so it's about a year and a half old, but it should be in good shape. I actually don't need that battery anymore on the RV, so we're gonna put it on the trailer here. I'll grab that and we'll hook it up. All right, so I've got the battery mounted. I've got most of this wired up. Um, I had an issue, I tested it, didn't work, and my red wires, I I guess you just have to join them together. I put one of these easy connections on it, 
I'm going to run that to the red terminal. And that should fix our problem. Because um, basically these were meant to work with an ignition and not a trailer so much. So I, I've got the black wire wired to the black terminal and the red to the red. And we're all wired up as far as the battery goes. So I'll get it working and running. Then I'll check back in with you. All right. Well, I've got it all coiled up. The wires are all kind of coiled up in a ball. I have to find a housing for them. I'm thinking I'll just buy another battery box and put it on this left side over here. And then I'll have a coil of wires on this side and then I'll have the battery on this side. Um, the battery's mounted in here. Go ahead and open it. So I don't have it hooked up. I didn't want any kind of draw on it. Plus, I'm gonna have to drill out this little terminal a little bit so it can fit, it, it almost fits. So I'll just drill it out with a little bit bigger size drill bit, and then I'll mount it. Um, other than that, I did not put a snatch block on there yet. I do have the snatch block right here. Um, I gotta figure out a way to mount it on this so that the wire doesn't rub on my trailer. So that's what I'm trying to figure out now. I might just run some kind of webbing through there, or maybe even a ratchet, a strong ratchet strap, like one of these type. It's rated at 6,000 pounds, I think. So I might just ratchet that tight when I'm at the site to pick up the car. That way this cable doesn't try and rub on this edge. Um, that's a four or eight ton snatch block, I can't remember. It should handle because the car only weighs about 3,500 pounds that I'm trying to, to to haul on this trailer. And this wrench or the winch here, you can see, is rated at 4,500 pounds. So I'm not really sure with winches if that 4,500 pounds means it can move something that's 4,500 pounds or if it has the the strength to pull to move 4,500 pounds because that's a different number. Um, one, you can straight deadlift something for 4,500 pounds, and the other is, you know, a 4,500 pound car that's rolling is really probably only going to be about 2,500 pounds of force or so. I didn't do the math on that, I'm just guessing. Um, but from what I've heard, it's about two thirds. Um, so if the car's 3,500, I'm guessing about 2,500 pounds of actual force needed. Um, so, but if someone knows the answer to that, if the winch is actually rated to lift like a dead weight of 4,500 pounds, or if it's like a rolling, a rolling uh, weight limit, which is what I expect it to be. Um, but that being said, my car is less than 4,500 pounds, so either way, we should be just fine with this Champion 4,500. And the reason I bought it was purely based on reviews. I, I was looking at a lot of winches and I was wanting to go into that $200 range. So um, all this stuff together minus the battery. I already had that. Uh, but all this stuff, this mounting plate was 50 or 60 bucks and then the winch itself was 150. So I think I was in it for about 200. Um, I did have to buy that snatch block. And that was another 15 20 bucks so if it won't pull the car up on it I'll do some kind of two to one mechanical advantage where I tie it to where I put a pulley like a snatch block probably just like this one I think I've got one more of these so I'll have to mount one more on the car and then or I'll mount the pulley on the car and then I'll pull the I'll pull this end and attach it somewhere back here and that'll that should give me a two to one advantage so uh, if, if my winch doesn't have the horsepower to pull it now that's gonna it's gonna give my cable a little bit more load but it'll move the car if the cable's rated uh, for for the weight of the car so uh, we'll see I'll make a video and 
Maybe I'll take some video while I'm pulling the car up on the trailer and we'll see how this Champion 4500 does uh, as I configured it. So like I said, I still just had to put the snatch block here and then I'm, I'm gonna put some kind of box to hide all this wiring. Um, so the remote does work too. I tested it out. You do have to hold the on button on the remote for three seconds before you can operate it. But uh, So you have the remote and you have this physical switch here. So I did test that. It's not plugged in now, so I'm not gonna test it again. But but yeah, easy install. Only thing that I would add in the future is probably a charging unit so that I can, when I'm driving the trailer around, it will charge this battery because otherwise it's just gonna, I'll have to physically charge it every time I need it. And this is a deep cycle battery, so it could do that, but I'd prefer to have my truck charge it when I'm driving. So. Uh, we'll let you know this Friday I'll try and put a car on this trailer and I'll video it and post it up. Thanks for watching.